Before starting, you will need to prepare the paint in a cup to make your wash. You can use a regular Dixie cup that you might find in your bathroom or any small plastic cup in your home. If you don't have any small plastic cups, then just use a regular drinking glass. The watercolor will not ruin the, um, the cup. Just clean it out once you're done. To begin familiarizing yourself with this medium, we're going to focus on the technique. The first technique is going to be how to apply a uniform wash. Wash is the term given to the technique of applying a fine layer of paint diluted with water to both large and small surfaces, though it more commonly refers to painting large areas. A flat wash is obtained by applying only the same tone. It results in an even layer of paint with no value variations and no trace of brush marks. Flat washes are applied to vary the white of the paper, to create backgrounds such as skies, or to cover a broad area of the paper. Although a flat wash looks deceptively simple on the paper, creating a perfect one is quite a challenge. You can lay a wash on wet or dry paper, and the advantage of doing it on damp paper is that the moisture prevents color breaking from happening. Also, the paint will take longer to dry. For the beginner, it is advisable to experiment with dry and wet washes to gain experience with both types. Today, we're going to be doing both, but to prepare, we have to mix the color for our wash. So before you start, you're going to need to prepare the paint in a cup. Be sure to mix a sufficient amount that will cover the entire area that we're going to be working on today. You do not want the paint to run out halfway through your work, as this will require you to stop painting to prepare more paint. It may be even impossible to obtain exactly the same tone as before, so make sure you mix enough. Today, we're going to be using the light orange color in your watercolor pan. Do not forget that watercolors lose their intensity as they dry. So test the color first on a separate piece of paper until you have the desired tone. Moreover, you need to bear in mind that whenever applying a plain wash, there is no opportunity to retouch or repaint it. So to begin, place a small amount of paint in the mixing container. You're going to do this by wetting your brush, wetting the light orange circle of watercolor on your palette and then bringing up the wet watercolor into your cup. After you have a lot of pigment within the bottom of your cup, you can dilute the paint with water and stir it with a brush to mix it thoroughly. Remember that washes require light tones that allow the white of the paper to show through to begin building up the tonal variations of the light areas. So we don't want to make this too dark, but you also don't want to make this orange too light. So only use a little bit of water. Um, most of the liquid should be coming from the orange in the pan. As you work, you might notice that the watercolor palette might get a little dirty. So it's very important that we keep our area clean. So if that would happen, um, you know, sometimes we'll take a damp spot or a towel and I'll just wipe the other area where maybe the paint has gone just to keep my palette a little bit cleaner and to make sure that the other colors surrounding that color are staying nice and pure. You also want to avoid leaving the brush in the water. If you do that, the bristles will end up being bent like this permanently and they won't stay straight. So after you're done using a color, clean off the brush with a regular cup of water and then gently drag it Notice I'm just kind of squeezing the extra moisture out around a paper towel like so. And then you can leave your paintbrush lying flat on your table. Paper expands when wet and shrinks when dry. Whenever you apply watercolor onto your paper, the paper does not always retain its flat, smooth shape. Sometimes it warps. The way to prevent these distortions from spoiling a painting is to stretch the paper. This way the artist can wet it with paint knowing that it will not warp and that when the paint dries, the paper will become smooth again. Paper is generally stretched over a rigid surface such as a piece of plywood or any other hard board that you may have. You can do this directly on your dining room table and just take some masking tape or painter's tape and apply it around all four edges. The next step is to take your 2H pencil and draw three rectangles in the upper two thirds of your square in each rectangle, sheet of watercolor We're going to be paper. applying a different type of wash. The first one will be a uniform wash on the left. The middle will have a gradated wash where you're going to be creating it on dry paper. 
and then the rectangle on the right will have a gradated wash on wet paper. Dip your size 10 rectangular brush into a cup of water and then with the board slightly tilted and with sweeping brush strokes, paint a horizontal stripe across the upper part of the paper. Notice how the inclination of the board causes the paint to accumulate in the lower part of the painted line. Stopping the edge from drying and preventing the color from breaking when applying the next brush stroke, work quickly to keep the accumulated paint at the bottom of the strokes from running down on the paper. Otherwise, the brush strokes will not blend and it will show visible streaks when dry that will be very difficult to remove or disguise. It is important to keep the brush loaded so it will not run out of paint halfway through a stroke. If the brush you are using is not very absorbent, reload it with paint for each stroke. Make the second stroke that you make in the opposite direction than the one you previously did. So you want to continually alternate the direction of your strokes as you continue. When you reach the bottom edge, clean the brush off, then dry it on a paper towel and use it to absorb any paint that has accumulated at the bottom so you still have a nice even wash. So I'm just picking up that darker paint right there, cleaning it off my brush, and then I have a uniform wash. Before we move on to creating gradated washes, I want you to just quickly take your brush and create a nice even stroke of watercolor paint across the bottom of the paper. We're gonna be learning how to make tones later on, so we need this to dry first so we can create tones successfully later on. Please remember to clean off your brush every time you're done painting something. Never leave it sitting in your cup of water. Always clean it off, wipe off the extra water, and lay it flat on your table. Next, we're going to be creating gradated washes, the first one being on dry paper. In a gradated wash, the color gradually pales from a dark value, usually in the upper part of the paper, to the merest expression of the same color in the lower part where it merges with the color of the paper. Gradated washes have many uses, the basic one being to represent the background or sky in landscapes. There are two methods of gradating, on dry and on wet. In both cases, it is advisable to stretch the paper like we've done and then tilt the board about 30 degrees the same way we did for the flat wash. To succeed, gradated washes should be done quickly and decidedly. Avoid the temptation of retouching with the brush so you do not alter the value. To begin the gradated wash on dry paper, use your number four camel hair round watercolor brush. Dip it in some water just to wet it and then dip your brush into your orange paint. We are gonna be applying paint to the upper part of the paper first. So apply the color on the paper as if you were painting a flat wash. Then you're going to load the brush with every other stroke with a little bit more clean water. So instead of loading the brush with paint for the strokes that follow, clean water is going to be used. Repeat this operation every time you add a new band of color. So every time I'm, you know, dipping my brush or painting my brush across the surface, when I go in to paint a new stroke, I'm diluting the pigment on my brush by adding more water onto it. Notice that as I paint down, I'm only dipping into my clean water bucket. I am not going back to my orange paint on the left. You're going to repeat this process until the color merges with that of the paper. So we should have a gradated value range where it goes from dark on the top and light on the bottom. And once you're done painting, clean off the brush fully Take off any excess water onto a paper towel and then reform the bristles by turning them in the crease of your palm to where they find, you know, make a point and then lay it down flat on the table. Next, we will be creating a gradated wash on wet paper. Laying a gradated wash on dampened paper produces a soft, uniform gradation of color that has no breaks. This method requires you to first wet the paper. Next, you're going to load a lot of paint on the brush and spread it on the paper from top to bottom so that the color pales as the brush works its way down the paper. For this final wash, use your number 10 brush and you have a clean cup of water. Take this clean cup of water and apply a nice even wet surface within your rectangle. Wherever you have water, that's where the color is going to go. So be very careful to keep the water within the rectangular shape.
and don't create a puddle of water. It should just be a dampened rectangle. When you begin, start the gradated wash by painting a dark line of color at the top. Slowly spread the paint down the paper with sweeping horizontal brush strokes. As you progress, the brush carries less and less color, so the tone gradually becomes paler. Apply more or less pressure on the brush to control the amount of paint released onto the paper. The greater the pressure, the more intense the color is. The amount of pressure you apply must be slowly reduced as you move down so that when the tone or value merges with the color of the paper, the hairs of the brush are barely touching the surface of the paper. Now remember, do not go back over previous strokes to try to help blend colors together. You're going to ruin the value in that section. So just kind of let the watercolor blend into one another. And once again, always clean off your brush and lay it flat on the table when you're done. Value, which describes a color's lightness or darkness, can also be referred to as tones. On value scales, colors range from light to dark and dark to light. Each color has an entire spectrum of values that range from a very minimal light value to a very dark value. By having a full range of values in your artworks can make the objects within your painting look three-dimensional while also helping to show space. Today, you're gonna to be creating a value scale by superimposing glazes. A glaze is a layer of transparent color. Whenever you apply a second layer of glaze over another, it's going to increase the original value of the color that was laid down prior. So to create this value scale, you need to make sure that every strip of watercolor is fully dry before you add the second, third, and fourth one on. Once your paint is dry, load the brush with the paint from the uniform wash and superimpose a second, third, and fourth layer of paint over the previous one, always leaving a small section of the wash prior uncovered. Continue until you have a superimposed glaze value scale that resembles the one that you're seeing here. Now that you guys are done practicing some watercolor, it's really important that you wash the paint brushes. You always want to wash the paint brush so you can keep the integrity of the hairs going in the direction they're supposed to do. So we can wash a couple different ways. Um, easiest way, if you have a bar of soap in your house, you can um, wet the brush and then rub the brush in the bar of soap in a very soft circular motion. You don't want to jam the brush into the soap or else that would ruin the bristles. And then just run the brush through the water until the sides are completely clean. Another way of cleaning the brush is you can use Dawn dish soap. This is literally like the best cleaning solution that you, um, that, that just, if you get paint on your clothes, use Dawn to get it out. It's like a miracle solution. But you can put a little dot of soap on the bristles and then Swirl the brush in your hand in a circular motion, trying to get it all nice and sudsy. And then um, after you know you feel like you've really sudsed it up as much as you can, you can then rinse that underneath the sink until that water runs clear. You want to make sure that all of the paint is out of the brush. If any brush or if any paint stays in the brush, then the hairs will fray apart and they won't stay nice and combined to create that really nice fine tip. To store your brushes, you're going to want to find a container. It can be like an old can that you've cleaned out. Um, and you want to store the brushes so where they're vertical like this. This will help keep the um, bristles all um, facing the same way. You also want to kind of mold the bristles back to that nice fine point. So I like to take it in the crease of my palm here and I twirl the brush as I pull it from that crease. So it gets to that really nice fine point like we're seeing there. So at the end of your painting session, this is what you want your brushes to look like. Sitting up vertically in a can to make sure that there's gonna be no fraying and they're going to dry properly.